Hello everyone, it's April. I am here today to chat with you about the books that I am most excited for for 2021. Books that are coming out that I just think sound fantastic. Most of them are books by authors that I know and love, um, but I have a few books here that I've not read the author, but I still feel drawn to these stories in a big way. So let's dive right in. The first is a book that I'm cheating a little bit here because it is actually coming out just before January 1st. It's coming out December 29th of this year, but I have been looking forward to it for a while. I've never read this author before, but the storyline, I've been wanting someone to write this story for a long time now. It's called The Mystery of Mrs. Christie by Mary Benedict. So this is based on Agatha Christie and a mystery surrounding her. In December of 1926, she went missing. Like this actually happened in real life. She went missing for 11 days. Uh, the police find her car abandoned on the edge of this pond and there's like her fur coat inside and she's just vanished for 11 days. Her family has no idea where she is. And then she suddenly reappears 11 days later and claims that she has no memory of what happened to her in those 11 days. And this dives into what could have happened to her in those 11 days. And that sounds fantastic to me. Moving on to a book coming out in January. This is a thriller. It's called People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. And this follows a very famous Instagrammer. Um, she has thousands and thousands of followers. Um, and uh, she didn't, I don't think, expect her rise to fame, but here she is. Uh, her marriage isn't doing so hot, um, but she herself isn't doing very well because there is a follower out there of hers who is obsessed with her. And this follower doesn't believe that our main character should have all the fame and all of the things. She shouldn't be this lucky, and I think she tries to bring her down, which I think sounds like so much fun. Next is another book coming out in January. This is The Divines by Ellie Eaton. I've never read anything by this author. I think this actually might be a debut. I could be wrong. Um, and this follows uh, a girl who had gone to a boarding school in high school. It's like many years later. Um, the boarding school closed very suddenly um, while she was there, I think, and I, th I think it closed because some not so good stuff was going on and she hasn't kept in touch with any of the girls she went to the school with. Um, they were all known as the divines and she is being brought back for some reason. She is drawn to this time and I think she goes back. I think she had moved to Los Angeles, but she goes back to England to kind of rediscover the past and sort things out. And it sounds very interesting to me. Next is Yellow Wife. This sounds incredibly painful. Um, it's also coming out in January uh, and it sounds really sad. This is about um, a woman who was born on a plantation in Charles City, Virginia. Her name is Phoebe and she has actually led a relatively safe life as a slave and she has been told that on her 18th birthday she's going to be freed and she has this image of her life like moving in this wonderful way she thought she was going to marry the love of her life but none of that happens instead she's actually sent to um a jail in richmond virginia um and she has to somehow survive. It sounds really rough, um, but it looks really good too. It has a blurb by Kathleen Grissom who wrote The Kitchen House, which I loved. And it says, this is so wholly engrossing, so exquisitely researched, so timely. I highly recommend this novel. So I mean, that sounds wonderful, but also very hard to read. 
Um, moving right along, we're moving into February. In February, The Nature of Fragile Things by Susan Meissner is coming out. And this is historical fiction. It takes place um, in April of 1906 when a massive earthquake um, just devastated San Francisco. I I'm assuming this is based on history. That's usually what happens. And we follow three women whose lives intersect on this day, April 18th of 1906, when this earthquake hits and it follows them. And I just, I trust Susan Meissner after reading As Bright as Heaven. I just desperately want to read all of her stuff and that's her latest one coming out. Next is another book coming out in February. This is Good Neighbors by Sarah Langan. This is a bit of a thriller. I think she mostly writes horror books, which I've never read her before. Um, but this follows a suburb and all of the neighbors in the suburb who are very fake, it sounds, until one day there is a sinkhole that a girl named Shelly falls into. Now her mother is devastated and very angry. She is Maple Streets. I guess they all live on Maple Streets. Uh, uh, she's Maple Streets Queen Bee and she's incredibly angry and she puts all of her anger towards this one family named um, the Wilds. They're a family of misfits and they have to fend off this really terrible accusation and there's like mob violence in this neighborhood. It just sounds so intriguing and it's got all sorts of people chatting about it. Liv Constantine, um, Victor Laval, Claire Fuller, like lots and lots of really great authors seem to have loved this one. So there is that. And now we are moving into March. Next up is Every Last Fear by Alex Finley. This is another thriller. There's a lot of thrillers on this list because I'm just attracted to them. Um, and this follows a, a guy named Matt Pine and he is an, a student at NYU. He comes back to his dorm room to find out that his whole family has died very tragically. There was a gas leak. They were on a vacation in Mexico. A gas leak happened. They all died. Uh, the police are saying it was just an accident, but the FBI won't say that they agree. It sounds like the FBI very much disagrees. Um, now that family has dealt with a lot of difficulties in the past because Matt's brother is currently in jail for having killed his girlfriend like many years before. And so all of the past and all of the present come to a head and it sounds wonderful that is coming out in March. Next is a historical fiction mystery book called The Lamplighters by Emma Stonex. And this follows a very strange event that happens in Cornwall, England in 1972. So okay historical fiction i don't really consider 1972 historical fiction but to each their own we all label it differently but this follows three lighthousekeepers who vanish from a remote lighthouse the entrance door is locked from the inside the clocks have stopped working um there were clear skies like what in the world happened to these men it follows their widows like 20 years later and this tragedy should have brought these wid widows together, but instead it actually drove them apart. And I'm assuming we're gonna find out what happened to these men. I want to know. Next, we're moving into May. And in May, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir is coming out. I loved The Martian by Andy Weir. I haven't read the other book, Artemis, I think. I haven't read that yet. Um, but this one just sounds, there's bits of it that sound a little bit like the Martian, which makes me really excited. So this follows the lone survivor of a space mission. This one astronaut survives. His name is Ryland. Um, and his mission is to essentially save Earth. Now, unfortunately, he has woken up, I guess, for some reason, they were all in their pods or something. All of his crewmates died except for himself. 
he woke up and he's forgotten a lot. So he's trying to piece together like, what am I supposed to be doing? <laughs> and he is the only hope for humanity. And that just sounds like a lot of fun. Angie Weir is such a fun writer. I know this is just going to be a wild ride and just like an easy, easy book to get through. Next is another thriller called The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb. And this follows a group of wives, one of whom is like a, the newbie to the group. And I think that's who we follow um, to begin with. Her name is Sophie. And she like meets all of these wives who get together and they go and practice target shooting at a range. Well, one day, a teenage girl is found dead in the woods where they do this target shooting. And clearly one of them must have accidentally killed this girl. And it is about what happens from then on. It sounds like a lot of fun. That one is coming out in May as well. Next up is the new Riley Sager. This is coming out in July. It's called Survive the Night, and I can't wait. This follows a man and a woman or a guy and a girl um, driving in a car one evening in November 1991. You know, they're listening to Nirvana um while they're driving uh it, it, so i love that it's going to pair this nostalgia with this like a very tense drive because um charlie uh her best friend was murdered by this college campus serial killer um unfortunately she finds herself in a situation where the guy beside her who she's driving with is most likely the killer. Like she's getting all of these clues, all of these signs that he is the killer and she has to navigate the most awkward, uncomfortable, terrifying ride of her life. The only nonfiction on this list is The Family Firm, a data-driven guide to better decision-making in the early school years by Emily Oster. I really love her. This is coming out in August. I have appreciated her time and time again. I read Expecting Better and Crib Sheet, both of which kind of lead you through making some decisions in parenting um, based on the data. She is an economist. She studies data for a living. That's what she does. And when she was raising her kids, she realized that a lot of the data out there was very old or wasn't being approached properly and was just being spewed with no restraints. There was no rationale. And so she's like, okay, this needs to stop. I'm going to do my own research. And so she's been writing these books and I really appreciate her. So um, in this book, obviously she's, you know, studying school and school age kids. So she asks questions in this book like, What's the right kind of school and at what age um, should a particular kid start? How do you encourage a healthy diet? Should kids play a sport and how seriously? So all of these questions that a lot of people have different varying opinions about and she just looks at the data. She's very much like not judgmental. You do what you want to do, but I really like her. Next is another book coming out in August that I'm very eager for. It is the sequel to Dear Mrs. Bird by A.J. Pierce. This is called Yours Cheerfully. And I loved that book so much. That one followed a woman during World War II. She was a journalist. She wanted to be a hard hitting journalist. However, that didn't fully pan out for her. And she ended up working for a columnist helping women deal with the issues of their life and she decides to you know step in and sometimes write as Mrs. Bird because Mrs. Bird wasn't up to snuff. So in this book Emmeline is still working at the magazine and um, people have reached out to her to help them to recruit women to do some work for the war effort and she realizes it's a little more complicated than originally thought. And finally, I don't have a, a date for this one, but I have to include the new Grady Hendrix. This is the final girls support group. And this is probably my most anticipated book of 2021. 
So this follows six girls who were all final girls and they have created a group um, and they basically are a bit of a support group for one another and they've been getting together for like two decades. It says that they've managed to survive the unthinkable and now someone is coming for them. Oh my gosh. Oh, it says June. I found out. Okay. It's coming out in June. That is like music to my ears. So those are all of the books that I'm like extremely excited for, for 2021. Are there others that I know are coming, but, uh, and I'm excited about, but there's not information about them. Like Colson Whitehead is coming out with another book in 2021. Karen Slaughter is coming out with another book in 2021 but there's no information about them. So I can't really talk about them here. Um, but these are all of them that I'm super excited for thus far. Let me know in the comments below, below if there are any books that you're excited to read in 2021. I'd love to hear it and I will talk with you soon. Bye everybody.